Welcome to a brand new video tutorial series in Lightwave. This tutorial series will cover Turbulence FD inside Lightwave 3D. In the following episodes, we will cover all the settings, all the tips and tricks that you have to know to use Turbulence FD inside Lightwave. In this first episode, we're creating this very simple and basic first fire simulation as you can see here so let's enjoy and let's get started when you have the newest version of lightwave 2023 turbulence fd is now part of it okay so when you buy lightwave 2023 you have turbulence fd in the package so to import the lightwave turbulence fd tab here in the top bar to have all the menus it's very simple just go to edit edit menu layout and here you can see the main menu which is the which are these tabs on the top here and create a new group and double click you can rename it wherever you like I called my lightwave turbulence FD but you can choose whatever you like in this case I just using test and then go right click import branch and just open up the new window here where your lightwave is installed and it goes into support configs and here is the tfd branch config file click on that press open and as you can see we get new test tab or whatever you name it and then you have all the settings that you need for Turbulence FD. All right, so let's jump right in. So we go into the model tab, create a geometry sphere, and we make the sphere really tiny. So let's say about two centimeters. And press OK. And then we adjust the grid size to about 10 centimeters right there so now we have this sphere and this sphere will be our emitter okay so go to the turbulence fd and make emitter it's popping up this window and we will have a look on that so this sphere now is our emitter okay so here the first thing we can remove this from the emitter type straightforward then we have four tabs general texture force channels so in the general tab you have three modes disable single and include children the radius here tells when the particles get emitted how far away from the actual surface the particles will be emitted so we know that our sphere is two centimeters. The radius here is set to one centimeter, which means that the particles will be starting to emitting one centimeter inside of the ball, right? And creating the shape of the fire. If we set this to two, then the particles will be emitting exactly on the surface of the object if we crank this up to 10 centimeters the particles will be starting to emitting 10 centimeters away from the surface and it's creating a bigger shape of the fire okay i recommend you to choose the radius that your actually emitter has or at least approximate the shape size of your emitting geometry the settings down here collision objects fill objects and all the settings here we will looking in the next episodes as so the texture tab and the force tab but here what we use is the settings of the channel and here we're going to be looking at the temperature and density for now. The next step is that we need a kind of a container. 
because now Turbulence FD does not know where to add the voxels or the particles because the space is infinite, big, okay? So we need to have a kind of a container to tell Turbulence FD, look, in this area, in this specific area, you can emit particles. And this is very simple. Just go in here and add container. Rename this container, whatever you like, but I call it now my first fire. And press OK. Now, as you can see, it's creating this giant box, which is not giant because it's just one meter, actually, right? Our sphere is two centimeters. This is because this box appears really big. Within this box, the particles and the voxels get generated. In this case, where you have just a tiny little flame, which is about five to six centimeters in this case, you don't need a one by one meter container. This is a waste of resources and a waste of render time, right? So you don't need this big box, right? So in this case, what we do is reduce this to about 50 by 50 centimeters, raise it up a bit. All right, so now we have our emitter set, we have our container set, and everything is ready to run, okay? So you can turn on here, simulate while rendering, so you can see when it's calculating, you can see the fire on your viewport. So press start. And now it's asking you, do you want to overwrite the cache file that you already created if there is some cache file? In this case, I just say yes. So as you can see, it's calculating. So now the calculation is done. And when we scroll to the timeline, you can see nothing. So what is the reason for that? And this is something that maybe some new users that use Turbulence FD the first time noticed and asking what's happened, why I, I don't see anything. So the reason is simple. You have to go into the emitter window and here is the channels tab. And here you have to set up the temperature and the density. So for now, I set the value to 1, 1. Now when we press start, we can see the fire in the viewport. So how simple is that? So now we can make some changes. In the container, we can go to simulation. And as you can see, we got a lot of tabs here, a lot of settings. We will cover every setting in future tutorials. But for now, we dive into the temperature and density, activate the density. So we're working on temperature and density. And then we also go inside the turbulence and we activate the turbulence. The turbulence is basically just a noise. And what we do now is we crank this up to about, I don't know, let's say 0 0.5 centimeter of a turbulence. And then the turbulence speed, let's say to three. And we had a bit of wind, wind direction. Let's crank this up to about three. And the wind speed is about 30 centimeters. So now you can see that we have a flame with some turbulence and some wind.
So as the fold, it shows you as a kind of a heat map. Red is the hottest spot, then yellow, then green, and goes to light blue and to dark blue, right? And it shows you basically the heat map of your fire. So here you can change the channel, right? If you want to go closer and um, finding out where is a spot that it's not working correctly, so you can visualize the different channels and see if there is a, any issue, right? So now we set the channel to temperature so we can see the temperature and the shader here we can switch to fire shader and this gives us a fire shader in the viewport and it gives us a bit more reference how the fire looks like we can also change it to the smoke shader and now here we can see how the smoke looks like all right so everything is set it up and now it's time to have a look in the VPR and how it looks, okay? So let's go to view, change view, and switch this to VPR. All right, and now you may ask, where is my fire? Why I don't see my fire? Well, maybe it's too bright. So let's come in here into the environment map and turn this off. To see the fire in the VPR, you have to go into the render tab, render properties, and then into volumetrics, you have to turn on use legacy volumes. Click on that. And here is the fire, right? Inside the VPR. And voila, you have your first fire set it up with Turbulence FD inside Lightwave. So that's basically it. That's your first fire simulation. Congratulations. In the next episode, we create a candle and a candle light and a candle flame, which is actually go closer to a real project and we can play around with the settings. So stay tuned for that. If you like this tutorial series, please like, comment and subscribe you get notice when the new episode is up. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you on the next episode very soon. Bye, everybody.